Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. When Jesus heard it, he, de- he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. So today's gospel lesson, the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves and the fishes, is the one miracle that's found in all four gospels, and therefore it comes up more than once in the Armenian church calendar. So it's clearly of great spiritual significance. As you recall, Jesus was teaching a crowd of followers well into the evening, so they didn't have anything to eat the whole day. And when they finally thought of food, there was only five loaves and two fishes available to eat. But with those few loaves and fishes, Jesus, it is said, fed the 5,000 men plus women plus children there that day. This was indeed quite a magic trick. And it's natural of, to ask of Jesus the same thing I remember asking nine years old when David Copperfield on television made the Statue of Liberty disappear. How did he do that? Well, magicians don't reveal their tricks, but honestly, I feel like it won't be long before we could offer some kind of scientific explanation of how Jesus might have done this. He harnessed enough strong, enough energy fields to create particles and antiparticle pairs, etc., etc. Remember, this is God himself who made all of nature and its laws. Is it that surprising that he could temporarily bend the rules to demonstrate his glory and love? No, in order to get to the heart of this miracle, we have to get beyond just the physical to the spiritual. And we need some kind of slow motion, x-ray camera, to pick up moments of the heart, movements of the heart that the naked eye can't see. And if we do that today, we just might discover that Jesus has a much greater superpower than making things appear out of nowhere. And that this superpower is one we can harness to perform miracles in his name each and every day. So today's reading just happens to play back in slow motion what occurred right before the feeding of the 5,000. Here's how it begins. When Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. When Jesus heard it, heard what? This is a crucial detail in discovering the miracle before the miracle. Because right before the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus had just gotten horrible news that his cousin, his friend, his fellow preacher, John the Baptist was beheaded for speaking out against the moral corruption of the royal family. So Jesus was grieving for his friend. Not only that, Jesus was keenly aware that his head would be next. And so he goes off to be by himself and process his emotions. Now, I don't think any of us can imagine exactly what it feels like for a friend to be violently killed and for us to feel like we'd be next. But at least maybe we can recall a time when we were shockingly sad, maybe when a parent or a close friend died, or a relationship or a job ended that you thought would last. In moments like these, if you're like me, all you'd want to do really is just be quiet to process, perhaps to pray, but above all, just not to be bothered. That's surely what Jesus was looking for when he went to a deserted place by himself. What he got instead was a crowd of 5,000 people who tracked him down and interrupted his much needed time alone. Now, I'm not sure how you would react to this, but I know how I'd react to this. I would be put upon, I would be guarded and resentful. People, give me some space. I'm doing everything I can to serve you, to serve God, but there are limits. I just lost my friend. 
and they're coming after me. Just let me be in peace. But this is not at all how Jesus reacts. And here now our slow motion camera picks up the miracle. Before the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000, it's written, Jesus, when he saw the great multitude, he was moved with compassion for them and he healed their sick. Miraculously, Jesus is able to turn his feelings of loss and pain into compassion. He's able to turn the interruption of his prayer time into, of his personal space into an eruption of group prayer in shared space. And somehow, minutes after he gets this terrible and life-threatening news, he goes back to work healing them, teaching them, and eventually feeding them. I don't know about you, but forget about multiplying bread and turning water into wine. I want the superpower which turns annoying interruptions into meaningful ministry. I want the superpower which turns deep sorrows and anger into compassion and passion. I want the superpower which turns me time into we time. In a word, I guess I want the superpower of love, but love with a capital L, the love that is Jesus' love. And so how do we get this superpower? Well, this is no magic trick with easy answers. Actually, C.S. Lewis and Tolkien called it deep magic. They said that there's this hidden powerful force in the world. You could call it God's grace that we can slowly learn to trust and use through a lifetime of disciplined faith. And this deep magic, this grace helps us to see what appears to be ill-timed and unpleasant interruptions of our real life as precisely life itself. The life God is sending to us, one day by one day. Our master teacher, Jesus, knew that what seems to be interruptions are really God's appointments. May we learn this wisdom and find this grace. The deep magic also teaches us to offer up all things to God, especially our sorrows and our shames, so that he can somehow redeem them, turning trash into treasure. And our master teacher, Jesus, was reeling from his dear friend John's murder, but a lifetime of patient prayer helped him transform his anger and pain into action and compassion. And rather than fear and curse death, Jesus healed and brought life. May we learn this wisdom and find this grace. And so, brothers and sisters, our scriptures are indeed a book of magic, and Jesus is indeed the greatest magician who ever lived, but not because he at times broke the laws of physics and nature which he created, but because he was able to break through the law of human nature, of self-interest, of self-preservation, of survival of the fittest, which the world had become chained to in our sins. His superpower to break these chains is a bold and self-sacrificing love a magic that is hidden deep within creation and God himself, but has been revealed for all of us to see and to practice by following the miraculous life of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, now and always and into the ages of ages. Amen.